Section number seven from Letters from the Relentless Pursuit. This is Last Chance of Freedom. It was written April of 2013. What is the f- purpose of free speech if we are afraid to use it? What's the point of having rights that we don't use? Art has been raped under the idea that we need to sell and profit instead of challenge and inspire the person consuming the product. Our schools are more like dysfunctional factories than sanctuaries for critical thinking and intellectual development. We value conformity and comfort, not heart and uniqueness. They have the wealth. The oil companies, the media, the bullshit music that they play on the trashy commercial radio, the abortion that is the education system, and the catastrophe that is the healthcare system. Notions like upward mobility, meritocracy, and the fairy tale once known as the American dream are now and always were fucking lies. The only way to combat our strangulation of freedom and the mockery that has been made of social justice is to keep making independent art. I speak for some of us when I say their attempts to brainwash us with their garbage media and entertainment have failed. The trash food and contaminated environment we are forced to live in have not diminished our spirits. The rising prices of all things necessary and the wealth gap have fuel of the fire that burns in our soul, not extinguished it. They can take everything from me, which they pretty much already have, but I refuse to be silent. I will never appeal to their bogus authority or power. This is, and always will be, music for the people, by the people. The album Last Chance of Freedom was built on that premise. It is constructed under the paradigm that the vast majority of us are fucked, backed into a quarter, fighting a battle that has long been lost. However, instead of compliance, we meet this adversity with opposition, forever spitting in the face of all those who tell us to be silent and obey. Our last act of civil disobedience is making music that is not and never will be intended for to please or profit. Instead, it is meant to do what real art is supposed to do, make the person consuming it feel and think. These are very dangerous notions that this hyperconformist culture has tried to beat out of us. Let them not succeed in taking that away. Now this music has taken me across this enormous, dysfunctional, beautiful, fucked up country of ours for years now. Now I've done this without a big label, without a booking agent, no commercial media or press agent, and of course terrestrial radio is never going to back this shit. So for a long time, it's just been my songs and me and the highway. DIY, as the punk rock snobs say. During those long, lonely drives, I'd have my headphones cranked up to ten. At some point, something occurred to me on one of those long, lonely roads I was on. I thought, why is everything I want to crank up 30 or more years old? Dead Boys, The Stooges, Misfits, Motorhead, Dead Kennedys, Black Flag, Old ACDC, The Sonics, Fear, MC5, Stiff Little Fingers, Ancient Orange, Millions of Dead Cops, Minor Threat. Compared to that shit, nothing today has any balls at all. I asked myself, why wasn't there any band putting out this kind of noise today? And then I had an idea. Why don't I do it? That is where the sound of Last Chance of Freedom is rooted. You can teach notes, but you can't teach heart. Desperation and starving for your music gives you an edge that you can't buy, sell, or repackage. Now, on the music side of things, it's been five years since Ben and I recorded the last motherfucking Saints album. We were very different people back then. Our ideas were different, our attitudes were different, and I am pleased to say that we have evolved musically and personally. Now, trust me, the attitude of songs like Eat, Fuck, Kill will always be in my heart, but I honestly don't want to be playing them if I hit age 50. In my opinion, Last Chance of Freedom is a far better representation of who we are now and better chronicles of struggles we have been through. The fact is I'd rather have been playing with me than any drummer there is out there in rock and roll, period. One reason is I believe, and this is considering the obvious biases, that he is still the best. The other reason is if you play for someone as long as we have and have been through so much shit as we've been through together, you know what that person's going to do before it happens. 
This album is probably more of a motherfucking Saints Bastard Child than a Saint Christopher album. I can't thank my older brother enough for his dedication and talent. Richard Laferty II. I'll never forget January fifth, two thousand thirteen. Now I've cried about I've cried enough about this in public and in private. Here's the bottom line. No one was like Richard. No one will ever be like Richard. I knew this man for under three years and loved him like a brother. For me, he did the one thing that many others in my life have never been able to do, and that's accept me for who I am and make me feel like I was loved unconditionally. We may have lost him here, but his spirit and soul live loud and proud in my heart. I'm happy the last words I said to him in that hotel parking lot on December 10th, 2012 was I love you, brother. And then we hugged and I said goodbye and I said I'd see him soon. I hope to see him down the road and give him one of those hugs and tell him how much I love him again. Hopefully sooner than later. It was such an honor to have Mr. Billy Cook help me memorialize Richard and lay down some uh, slide on the song Ride. That's the song I dedicated to Rich on the album. Not only is Billy a dearly beloved friend uh, with a lot of talent, he loved Rich as much as I did. I can't thank him enough. Huge thanks to Mr. Dan Infecto for recording uh, that track out in Seattle and sending it back to Lincoln. Love you both, guys. Now, Nebraska, the conservative life. The wrong people have hijacked our country, and I want it back. Here is life according to me. You should have the right to vote, get an abortion, own a gun, marry anyone you want, even if they have the same genitalia, get a free and equitable education, not die on a couch of a heart attack because you can't afford the bill like my dad almost did, decline military service for bullshit wars that kill innocent people, which they all do, not have to live by antiquated Puritan Christian beliefs that you don't believe in, strike and stand up for your labor rights, Protest and question the government. Die on your own accord with dignity. And hold corporations accountable to spew toxins into the environment. I am wholeheartedly convinced that religion has harmed more people than drugs. Many factors have brought me to this conclusion. However, none more than one key event that happened to me when I was a senior in high school. In 1999, Ron Brown came to speak at Malcolm High School. For those who don't know, Ron Brown was, at that point in time, the assistant coach with the University of Nebraska. Even though this team is not any good anymore, college football is king in Nebraska. Therefore, everyone associated with the football program get away with whatever crime or infraction they commit. That's including these fuckers running around, assaulting people, getting DUIs, raping people. Good work, Lincoln Police Department, because... Uh, so many of these cocksuckers have been let free and not punished just because they're somehow associated with that fucking stupid football program. Anyway, the old ball coach got up and said disparaging, hateful remarks about Jews, Muslims, and anyone who didn't believe that Jesus Christ was our Lord and Savior. He proclaimed to a packed gym that we were all going to hell if we were gay, drank, smoked, did drugs, had premarital sex, had an abortion, didn't go to church... And didn't believe in the Christian faith. So basically, according to this jerk-off, everybody's fucked. I sat through the whole hate speech just so I could catch every word. When this fuck face was done talking, I stood up and I walked to the middle of the aisle that was made in the gym, looked him straight in the eye and walked out. I was the only person, the only one in that whole gym that walked out in protest. And... When I proposed the idea to write a rebuttal to his remarks in the school paper, I was denied the opportunity. It was a profound moment in my teenage life. Now, guilt and fear are very powerful and dangerous weapons. Both of these components are key when shaming young minds into following irrational causes, such as fundamentalist religious ideas. The irony and hypocrisy is that Christianity preaches love and tolerance, yet at the same time condones hatred toward people who don't follow the scripture and don't believe what they want you to believe, how they want you to believe it. I find it outrageous that we as a society support anti-bullying campaigns, yet we allow bullying 
of the masses under banners of policy and faith. This is where art and music can be a tool to fight against these awful messages conveyed by these bigoted individuals in positions of power. So let me leave you with this. I believe in ideals. I believe that this country was built on certain principles that we cannot let be taken from us. If we don't keep producing independent art, music, film, media, and literature, the magnificent principles that this amazing country was founded upon will die. That is, if they have not already. This, my friends, is our last chance of freedom. This is the last gasp of the dying art of integrity. Our art and our voice are revolution.